Still to come, it's been a thousand days of determined waiting. Four close Massachusetts parishes mark a milestone in the battle over church closures. I'll be joined by Council of Churches co-chairman Peter Beret in a minute. Ken Curtis report. Welcome back. I'm joined now by Peter Beret. He is the co-chairman of the Massachusetts Council of Parishes, a group that has served as a support group for Catholic churches slated for closure. This month, four churches initially ordered to close their doors passed the 1,000-day mark in their own vigils at the standoff with the Boston Archdiocese. Peter, welcome. Nice to be here. Th these last few years have been difficult for most Catholics in the Boston Archdiocese, Indeed. particularly those whose churches were ordered closed, and especially those who have maintained these vigils for a thousand days. How long can they endure? They're going strong uh, for a few reasons. We have right now about 10 appeals before the Vatican Supreme Court, Shades of the Da Vinci Code, They've been sitting in Rome now since uh, 15 months. Three of these appeals are from groups that are currently in vigil, the Vigil Five. Uh, our lawyers in Rome tell us that whenever the Vatican Supreme Court, the Signatura, comes out with its decisions, we stand a pretty good chance. So having invested a 1,000 days in this effort, at least the four that you highlighted, they're going strong. They're not going to fade in the fourth quarter. Now, uh, th this uh, appeal to the canonical court, uh, the attorneys, uh, canonical lawyers, are they, are they priests, or do you, you can't use uh, civilian lawyers, I wouldn't think? Exactly right. In fact, there's about a dozen people qualified. It's like quali being qualified to plead before the U.S. Supreme right. Court. Not any lawyer can walk in. Another barrier to entry is that all of the appeals have to be filed in Latin, which kind of narrows the field. I've translated about three or four such appeals with the help of a dictionary, it's a highly specialized skill. Most of the so-called advocates in Rome are lay people, and they've made this their lifetime profession. It's very arcane. The procedures go back centuries. There are no fixed timelines. So you file your appeal, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait. And there's no appeal from that. It's like the United States Supreme Court. Once that, uh, that, that the canonical uh, jury decides that it's over, uh, that's correct, and in fact, the president of this court meets once a month with the pope to discuss the caseload because there's no doctrine of separation of powers. So once you have cleared this court, it doesn't do you much good to go to the pope, so I suppose you could think of going one pay grade above the pope, <laughs> but that takes <laughs> us into another that, realm. Yes, indeed it does. Uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, there's, there's several things, but uh, the first thing is it's St. Saint James the Great. Uh, they've now appealed to the United States Supreme Court, having denied uh, their appeal to keep the church property by the state Supreme Judicial Court. When did, has that been filed? Uh, it's about to be. I spoke with their lawyers today. You're getting it first, breaking news. I did speak to their attorney, and since they lost at the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court level, their attorney has advised me this afternoon that they will file a writ with the U.S. Supreme Court to be heard. Now, there's no guarantee that the Supreme Court will take up the case. If it does, we have an interesting point. For the first time in the history of this republic, a majority of the justices on the U.S. Supreme Court are practicing Catholics, five of the nine. So let's stay tuned. This could be interesting. Peter, you were quoted uh, not too <coughs> long ago saying the, this archdiocese is hell-bent on destroying dozens of more parishes. Do you still think that's true? I do. Uh, to make it very brief, first of all, I commend the Cardinal for having put all of his financial, most of them that is, on their website. We have gone through them very carefully. For the last six years, the Archdiocese has been running a deficit. They've been funding this deficit by selling buildings, mainly parishes, to balance the books. Now, secondly, having lived in Rome for several years and knowing a little bit about canon law. In the state of Louisiana, you don't have counties, you have parishes, Jefferson Parish, Plaquemines, and so forth. That's the legacy of the French Napoleonic system, which was driven by the church. Under canon law, the parish is a territorial entity 
It is the building block of the church. And unless a parish is hit by a natural calamity, such as Bernard Francis Law, it is the obligation of the bishop to keep those parishes open. It is a gross violation of canon law to close those parishes to fill up the diocesan piggy bank. So we are approaching this issue not as a matter of please be nice to us, but as a matter of our rights as mainstream Catholics. But doesn't the separation of church and state come into play here? I mean, can the Supreme Court get involved in something like this? Remains to be seen. But the track that we are pursuing most aggressively right now is Rome under canon law. And that's where making, we're making this argument about parishes. The U.S. Supreme Court is a different issue. Well, I just have about a minute left. Have these vigils and, and, uh, and the <coughs> pain that uh, it is so heartfelt by all of the parishioners whose churches were affected, has it made an effect on, on Cardinal O'Malley? Uh, obviously, he's the best person to respond, but let me give you the indirect evidence. First of all, at eight, there were nine vigils. The Cardinal Blessing has reopened four of the nine. So we're down to five. Uh, secondly, I think that the facts will show that the flood of parish closings, which peaked three uh, in October of 04, has slowed down to a trickle. So we think we have had an impact, but we are pursuing Rome to basically block him from another massive round of parish closings. All right, Peter, on that note, we have to leave it. Peter Murray, thank you very much for your time. Great to be here. And um, I hope we'll, we'll have you back here in a short time when we continue this story and keep checking on it. Still to come tonight, your chance to...